smoke in my hair, my clothes thrown everywhere. Woke up in my rocking chair. Before Luke Bryan's particular brand of bro country music and Georgia Draw would make hearts swoon and fill stadiums across the country on his Kill the Lights tour, before his sexy dances would inspire countless compilation videos, gifts, and even give his ass its own Tumblr page. Before Luke Bryan's Don't Want This Night to End swept the 2012 American Country Awards and took home all nine awards it was nominated for. You got your hands up, you're rocking in my truck. You got the radio on, you're singing every song. Before the Prince of Bro Country tragically lost his sister and brother in law in 2014, leaving him and his wife to raise their nephew as their own. Thomas Bryan was the youngest son of a peanut farmer and his wife in a small town in Georgia. Music was a huge part of his life growing up as he sang in choir and starred in the school musicals. When he finally decided to pack up and head to Nashville to pursue his music career, a family tragedy had put his plans aside. I'm Amber Smith documenting the life of superstar Luke Bryan for you here on Before They Were Famous. Be sure to let me know who you guys would like to see in the comment section down below. We'll bring them to you next. Born on July 17, 1976, in Leesburg, Georgia. His mother is named LeClaire, and his father, Tommy, was a peanut farmer. He also had an older brother, Chris, and an older sister, Kelly. No one in the family played an instrument, but they sure did appreciate music. Records of Alabama, Conway Twitty, and other classic country artists were always playing in the house, and a young Thomas even had his own mini record player. Thomas spent most of his time helping his dad harvest peanuts and corn and prepping them in the processing plant out back. He also spent a lot of time hunting and fishing, something that would influence his songs later on. Hunting, fishing, loving every day. That's the prayer that a country boy brings. Now Brian went to Lee County High School, and for a town of just 3,000 people, it was surprisingly multicultural. His school had an equal mix of blacks, whites, and Mexicans, which meant a whole lot of break dancing went down at recess. Now Brian was a showman from the beginning. He liked shaking it to some good tracks and sang in the choir as well as at school musicals. He picked up his first guitar when he was 14 and a year later he was already picking up some extra cash by playing at bars. And he decided, hey, this isn't a bad way to make a living. Now when it came to pursue post-secondary studies, Thomas planned on moving to Nashville, but a tragic event would change that. On October 27, 1996, Thomas found out that his older brother had been killed tragically in a car accident. It was obviously very hard on him, but it was especially hard on his mother, and she asked Thomas not to leave. He stayed with his family and went to college in Georgia. Now he studied business administration at Georgia Southern University and soon joined a fraternity called Sigma Chi. In this chapter was another future country star, Cole Swindell. While on campus, he met his future wife, Carolyn Boyer, at a local bar. She was also attending the same college, and the two remained sweethearts until their wedding in 2006. Thomas graduated with his bachelor's degree in 1999. With his schooling finished and his parents now divorced, Thomas started helping his dad on the farm again. Now he did this for a year or so before his dad threatened to fire him if he didn't go chase his dreams in Nashville. He started out writing songs under the name Luke Bryan and got some attention when he wrote the hits Good Directions for Billy Carrington and Honky Tonk History for Travis Tritt. Well, I was sitting there selling turnips on a flatbed truck, crunching on a pork rind when she pulled out. Now that led to a publishing contract at Mirror Music, but with those good looks and boyish charm, it didn't take long for him to get put on a few magazines. Both Billboard and Country Weekly had him on a list of rising stars, and after writing his first hit single, All My Friends Say, Luke was invited to play at the Grand Ole Opry, a famous country venue in Nashville. His family was thrilled as his big sis Kelly arranged for over 100 people from Leesburg to go watch him. Now the performance was a success, and the audience loved Luke's tunes, but it was unfortunately marked by yet another tragedy. A 
few days after he rocked the Opry in April 2007, Kelly, his older sister, had died for unknown reasons. Again, he suffered the pain of a sudden loss of a loved one and was now the oldest sibling left in the family. Luke continued to write songs for other performers and co wrote the hit single Good Directions, which peaked at number one on the country songs chart and it landed him a recording deal with Capital Nashville. His talent for penning songs and lyrics was undisputed, and for his debut album, Luke co wrote 11 of the 12 songs on it. All Stay Me was released in August 2007. Now his next album, Doing My Thing, had a handful of singles that went to number one and Luke proved that he was not only great at writing songs, but could do it consistently. Now in the years that followed, Luke climbed higher and higher, cranking out country music songs about fishing, drinking, and beautiful girls. And the rest of the story, well, you know the rest because this is Before They Were Famous. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching this episode of Before They Were Famous. Make sure you watch other videos and other episodes that we have from this channel and that you subscribe so that we can bring you more. Now if you guys love Luke and you don't mind me, you can check out my Instagram page to see some photos of me at his concert a couple months back and one coming up in a couple weeks.